Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. The season three reloaded update for Warzone definitely added in a lot of really cool stuff, in my opinion. Uh, the event itself offers some cool limited time stuff like the rewards and Nakatomi Plaza, which actually currently has an insane strat to basically set yourself up for an entire match in about two, three minutes, I would say. Uh, we'll be breaking that down today. And alongside that, this update also added in several secret changes. It potentially is teasing some other future changes, and unfortunately, it also did not include some other things that were pretty highly anticipated as well. So as we break everything down today, if you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it. Goal for this one is going to be 4,012 likes. Let's see if we can hit that. And of course, if you're new here, or if you haven't subscribed yet, we are getting closer to 750k. So if you want to stay up to date with everything going on in COD, news, intel updates, all that stuff, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. Also right now, Code Immortal is currently 30% off on G Fuel, so if you want to grab anything there, uh, whether it be a new tub, a shaker cup, or maybe you want to try G Fuel for the first time via a starter pack, whatever the case is, Code Immortal has got you covered. So, first and foremost, let's talk about one of the bigger things that was added in with this update, that being the Nakatomi Plaza area in downtown. And specifically what we're looking at here is the special unfinished business contract that can pretty much guarantee you a way to keep yourself in the game all the way from start to finish if of course you can handle yourself in some gunfights here and there. Uh, this is basically going to get you $100,000 and specialist bonus and about anything else you need in the matter of like two, three, four minutes tops. It's so easy to do but it's also not that easy to do at the same time because a lot of players are going to be trying to do this. Basically, in downtown around the plaza area, there is these special unfinished business contracts that you can pick up. And when you do that, you end up getting what is essentially like a special scavenger contract. You have three crates you need to pick up or open rather. And uh, you go ahead, you do that. The crates spawn on various areas of the tower. Uh, some on the higher floors, some on the lower floors. I believe it's entirely random. Uh, just make your way around those. Then once you end up getting all three of those opened and completed, uh, you actually get a special key card in the last one. And this gives you access to the Plaza Vault, which is located on the 31st floor way up there. And inside of said vault is all the riches you could possibly imagine. Uh, in Battle Royale, you can end up getting upwards of $100,000 in cash between the various spawns for the bags of cash, then also what you can get out of the bank boxes in there as well. Uh, if you end up doing the other challenges around the area, like the whole uh, C4 disarming and then also the NPC challenge, you can open up even more uh, boxes in that vault and actually get even more cash and even more loot. Uh, but just simply doing the scavenger or the unfinished business challenge alone, that gives you access to the vault itself and then also the, uh, the bank box that gives you the specialist bonus coin as well, or multiple specialist bonus coins uh, from what I've seen which gives you a ton of extra weapon perks and then actual perks as well. You're basically a super soldier once you have that activated. And in the gameplay, I just want to say, I felt so bad. I'm trying to get footage for this. I walk up, there's three guys standing there. They weren't very friendly. I apologize to those guys if you're out there. It just That's the way the cookie crumbled, right? Uh, now, obviously, doing the scavenger and looting some of the bags itself is pretty easy. I mean, the challenge alone, grab the contract, open the boxes, go to the vault, open that up, get the loot. That's not hard whatsoever, right? What's difficult about this is just the sheer amount of people doing this, whether it be in Plunder or Battle Royale. Specifically, I'm looking at doing this in Battle Royale because it pretty much is a way to increase your chances of winning tenfold, right? Uh, the Plaza is going to be around for a bit, not forever, but for a bit. And uh, that means this strat is going to be available for the foreseeable future. So if you're willing to risk dropping in downtown, dropping hot right now, grabbing the contract, completing it, Doing this strat allows you to get rich very, very quickly and set yourself up with loadouts. Uh, specialist, obviously, which is a huge advantage. Then plenty of leftover cash for UAVs and revives pretty much throughout the rest of the game. And of course, if you don't spend all that cash, if you die, if that happens, you're obviously going to drop a ton of it, but you're going to end up keeping a larger amount as well. So maybe regaining is not going to be as hard either. So I think it's a pretty solid play to try and force out the challenge early game and then just frag out for the remainder of it just because... This is absolutely insane. It is very easy cash in theory, and if you can complete it, you're gonna pretty much be set up for that entire game. Now, this update, like I said, also added in several stealth changes or secret changes to general gameplay, and by that, I basically just mean the maps. Uh, Verdansk 84 actually changed some outside of all the diehard themed stuff. 
Then also Rebirth Island was updated. Basically, Rebirth got a whole like lighting revamp and construction was also completed and turned into the finished building. Sort of like what we had back during the whole destruction of Verdansk event, which is, I would say, pretty cool. I gotta say, if Verdansk had this lighting, it would be incredible. You know, a man can hope, right? Uh, the lighting now, it's got a lot of issues. If you look out of windows, you're basically blind. You also can't see into windows. Windows are our arch nemesis now, basically, on Verdansk. Uh, but the lighting on Rebirth looks incredible. I love it. I would hope that that could transfer over to Verdansk eventually. However, I digress. Uh, Rebirth got that. Verdansk also got a really interesting change. I'm sure there's some other changes that I haven't caught yet just because I haven't had a ton of time to explore the map just because we've been working on, you know, loadout videos and all sorts of other stuff. But one pretty impactful change was made to the hangars area outside of the Superstore. Previously, this area had a pretty decent amount of cover spread across the actual runway and like the sort of tarmac area. Then also uh, even down at the bend, which leads to the larger runway for the uh, actual airport area that also had a lot of cover and a plane there. But now all the airplanes there have been repositioned to sit outside of the hangars, leaving that whole sort of center runway and tarmac area way more exposed and also way tougher to cross if there's other teams in that area. If you're trying to rotate through there, like as the gas is coming in and there's other teams rotating alongside you, it is just a wide open, very flat area. Definitely not convenient to get into, you know, awkward gunfights in whatsoever. Overall, I wouldn't say this is the biggest change in the world, obviously, but uh, because Raven did end up shifting around this area and the layout a bit, it's going to play a lot different. And on top of that, what I'm mainly focused on here is the fact that this was unmentioned just like the Rebirth changes. They made these pretty specific changes and a huge change on Rebirth at that, completely out of the blue. I'm not sure why, but uh, that's the way things happened here. And I'm hoping we start to see some more map changes like this as we progress throughout future title updates. Of course, we know we're going to be getting uh, some bigger map updates with the seasonal launches and whatnot. So we should probably expect something big for Season 4, Season 5, Season 6, so on and so forth. Uh, but seeing changes here and there, I think would be a great thing just to keep things feeling fresh and then also uh, looking fresh too. Now, while this update did add in a lot of cool things, it also left quite a few things unmentioned or it went without changing a handful of things that have been anticipated for quite some time. Primarily large gameplay and feature updates that for whatever reason are still MIA. The first of which is the whole next gen update. Uh, this is something that's been talked about since the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X dropped and Warzone became playable on them. Uh, as of right now, with the exception of the Series X having the ability to utilize 120 hertz on certain monitors, there really is not a big difference outside of some load times between Warzone on PS4 versus on PS5 or Xbox One versus Xbox Series X or, uh, or Series S. Like personally, I don't think it makes much sense to own one of those new consoles if you're only going to play Warzone because you really wouldn't be getting that much out of it for the time being. That said, Raven did confirm a few weeks back that there is quote unquote, a dedicated tech team working on the next gen update for Warzone, but there's no ETA for it as of right now. Regardless though, we know this update is going to include uh, the universal 120 hertz support for all new generation consoles. Uh, it's gonna include faster load times and, uh, and support those new SSDs on the PS5 and on the Xbox Series X and S, I believe. And uh, while Raven didn't straight up say it would also include an FOV slider, they did also mention on a different conversation that they're aware the community is pretty much just dying to see FOV sliders come to consoles. So uh, that can sort of even out the gap between PC and console advantages. And I won't lie, that's probably the biggest feature there is that makes PC just so much more enticing to play on and so much more optimal. 120 FOV like what I play on versus 80 FOV, which is what consoles play on, is night and day. Like it's a massive difference. Uh, so while we didn't get these updates with the 1.37 update, we know they're being worked on and looked into behind the scenes, so our next best opportunity to get them would probably be the Season 4 update, and that'll be taking place in the middle of June. Then another big update that also was not added in with this patch is, of course, the Zombies camos, which months and months ago when the integration happened were said to be coming at a later date. And the last time we heard anything about Dark Aether or any other Zombies camos coming to Warzone was prior to Season 3 when Raven said that they're working to bring the camo over and they don't have an ETA for it. In my opinion, uh, that one is ever so disappointing considering we had a whole season themed around zombies, yet we didn't get the zombies camos put into the game. And on top of that, we also have blueprints and mastercrafts added in pretty much every single week that have awesome looking camos to them, yet one that we all assumed was being added in back in December still has not been pushed live. Uh, definitely a very big letdown there. I know I see you guys commenting all the time. Any word on, uh, on zombies camos? Zach, when are the zombies camos coming? 
As of right now, the latest that we know is that Raven is working on them, but they're not satisfied with how it'd be transferred over now. So they don't have an ETA as to when it could come out. So that's pretty much just a giant question mark, unfortunately. Uh, also real quick, we obviously didn't get any Modern Warfare content added in, the RAL LMG, SOAP, the CX-90 and whatnot, but I will have a different video talking about that stuff coming later on this week most likely, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, with all of that being said, that is pretty much going to wrap things up for today. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it, and uh, also let me know down in the comments below which of these missing features or which of these missing updates are you looking forward to the most. Of course, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed, feel free to subscribe. That way you'll always know whenever I post a new video, and you can always stay up to date with everything going on in COD. As always, if you want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL for a discount on all SCUF, G Fuel, Gamer Advantage, and Control Freak products, and the links for all those can be found down in the description below. But once again, thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.